Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Neville and welcome to Selective Imagery. I started taking pictures when I was seven or eight years old and I really shoot just about everything. And here's some samples of what I take, whether it be sunrises, alligators, birds, birds, birds. It's what I do a lot of right now. But I also do macro. I'll do small animals and I'll do street photography and I'll use my old cameras to take some black and white photos with. So here's a sample of uh, one of my cameras coming up. So I'm a generalist but right now I'm focused a lot on wildlife and birds in particular. So I hope you enjoy my channel and let's get right to the show. Welcome to Birds in Flight Plus. Hello folks, this is Jeff Neville on safari at Huntington Beach State Park in Merle Zillman, South Carolina with my friend Bob from Bob Our Photos, who's filming me. So I heard a rumor there were lions and cheetahs here now, so I thought I would dress appropriately. Just kidding. But here we are, it's like 6.30 a.m. Uh, June 24th. So we're going to see what we get. Hopefully we'll have some luck today. It's rained all week long. And that's it. And uh, just so we have proof that Bob is really photographing and video, video, doing the video here, I will get a picture of him. And I got to back up because I got the 800. So I got to back up about 800 feet. And... And I can get him to me. So here's what we're seeing so far. Group of snowies and great egrets. Some little blues. A couple great blue herons. We got a lot of rain yesterday. They haven't had time to drain it out of the pond side yet, but they will. Overlook areas where you're coming to the park. So, that person's leaving. There's one overlook area there on one side facing the pond. And then you got this one facing the marsh. Like I said, it's low tide at the marsh, and there's like nothing around in there right now. Which is not how it should be. And here is why we have the title, Birds in Flight. Plus, you'll see in a little bit. But, oh man, it's just, uh, some days the birds just don't get close to you. And you end up just picking up on birds flying towards you, and you take what you can get. And that's just the way it works out. So you're going to see a lot of bird in flight uh, still images. And uh, like I said, sometimes that's what you get. So here's a little blue heron that finally got close enough uh, to me to get a picture of it in flight. That like took forever. And then we have a great blue heron. Followed by a Rosetta Spoonbill. And we have, uh, boy, they're pretty, aren't they? We follow that up with a wood stork, which we have not seen a lot of wood storks this year. I mean, I'll talk about that more in a little bit. And uh, earlier in the, in the video clip, you saw all the great egrets that were all hanging around. And eventually they started to peel off and fly near me, so I captured images of them. And that was a lot of what that particular, or this particular morning was. And here he or she is coming in for a landing. And does a great job of sticking it perfectly. You get a 10. I don't know if people realize that uh, these birds were hunted near extinction in the 1800s and early 1900s for their long plumes that were on ladies' hats. 
and uh, these shots I like because man you really get a sense for how big the wingspan is on these birds they're up to four and a half feet across you don't realize it until they're coming right at you and here's a wood stork I like the way the the wings are positioned on this one and um, tricolored heron yeah some people absolutely hate bird and flight pictures where you have the sky and it's like I don't know what the hang up is you gotta you you gotta shoot what's available to you and yeah sure when you have a background it does look better but sometimes you get the lighting that's just perfect on the bird when they're in the sky and so don't discount it I mean, like I, I've said many times, I'm not fortunate enough where I get a lot of fluffy clouds down here in South Carolina. It's usually either gray or white or dark blue. And then when you have your 800 and they do get close to you, take a headshot. Here's a, a red winged blackbird. And another photo. Here it has an insect in its mouth. And here's a short video clip and you can see that that insect that's trapped in its mouth. Now it's relatively close to what uh, my friend Bob and I were calling um, Gator Island. And the gators have not laid on that island in quite a while. The grasses have gotten very tall. And there is a red wing blackbird nest in those grasses. So um, the male here eventually is going to go back to the nest with that food item and feed it to the babies. I'm not, you know, or feed it to mom. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't hear the sounds. You can't, if there are babies that have hatched, you can't see them yet. but they're fun and then a few still images of a great egret so I did manage to get some pictures of birds that aren't flying around and here's a, a pretty decent sized gator going through the water and here's a smaller one that got a food item, but we really couldn't tell what it had in its mouth. I don't know if it was a small fish or a very, very small blue crab. It, didn't, it did not choose to open its mouth up wide enough where we were able to tell. And then, of course, we have the two-tiered approach here. The, uh, the spoonbills in the foreground and the great egrets in the background and um, here an egret is uh, trying to get some food and speaking of getting food it's always fun to watch the Anhingas uh, get their fish they come up with it speared they flip it and they swallow it they put on a nice show for you This gator, on the other hand, wasn't ready to eat yet. And I was really proud of this upcom upcoming gator shot and, the, and this gator because uh, he or she finally decided to quit smoking. Finally, a pair of spoonbills show up with the wood storks. And here we go with another great egret in flight. That's why we named this Birds in Flight for this episode. And uh, here's another video clip of the wood stork. Some wood storks hanging out with a spoonbill.
another bird in flight shot a little bit of the sky a little bit of the tree line blurred out in the background and here's a video clip showing you where some of the wood storks choose to go they just fly up into the trees and hang out for a while Like I said, their numbers are much small, uh, lower this year. I mean, you would have a bunch of them in the marsh side, and it, it'd look like an army. They'd all be lined up. They'd all be marching uh, together, back and forth, while they're trying to get food. Here's another video clip of the spoonbills, and here's a, a yellow legs that's deciding to uh, wash up a little bit and then says I'm getting out of Dodge these gigantic wood storks are gonna land on top of me if I stick around and here comes another one they don't land as gracefully boy they're big and uh, they usually hit the water and um, make one hop up again before they land And not a lot of water, I mean, for them to be playing in, I'll tell you that. But it's good to see some wood storks anyway. <laughs> that one almost runs right, lands right on top of the other one. They are not graceful. That word uh, does not describe them at all. Spoonbill just has an itch or something, boy, it just keeps on keeps on scratching. This one's cleaning up. It's preening itself with the sun hitting it. A lot of these storks, I mean, you don't see them getting food. They're just kind of like drinking some water. Water temperature has to be pretty high. I think one day on the news they said the beach, the water temperature at the beach was like 85 degrees. So, I mean, that's like, that's like taking a warm bath. I love the red. Uh, orange, orange or red color uh, outline around the eye. Um, this is a kill deer. A few shots of a kill deer. Cute bird. Sometimes you find them out in out in open grassy areas too, not even near the water. You know, feeding on bugs and stuff. And another another clip with the storks and the spoonies water levels so low uh, lots of times when the when the birds are walking you know, they'll be lifting up a big clump of mud uh, on their feet. Here, here they're where it's pretty much just muddy, but other areas you have a lot of allergy and grasses, so they'll lift their feet up and just have a big, big wad of, of, of grass on it. But sometimes the wood stores, like I said, you, you get 50 or more all lined up and 
when they're not feeding and they're all lined up, they just look like soldiers and they, they don't even move. They just stand perfectly still. And one of uh, everybody's favorite small birds in the park, the painted bunting. They are beautiful birds. And this is a video clip. This one is at normal speed. And he's just like walking across, following the, uh, the reeds and grasses here. And kind of poking his, you know, turning around his head a little bit, like looking in there. So I'm sure if he spotted a frog or something along the water line there, uh, it would take it out. Back to these guys. Oh, that spoonbill just got a big wad of mud in its mouth. I don't know. I don't know why it liked that. Hopefully there was something good to eat buried inside that dirt. Now there are shrimp uh, in the um, on the pond site here. Um, shocked how many crabs there have been uh, for the gators, although it seems like their uh, quantities are diminishing. And unless the crabs like to cross over the road from the marsh side to get into the pond side, you know, we may have a problem down the road, especially if they don't open up the the gates to let the water flow from the marsh into here, but they're keeping the water artificially low, uh, but that's going to limit the food supply at some point. Another shot of the painted bunting. And here's a gator getting a little exercise. Like it when you get the reflections of the tree line and, um, you know, in the water adds a bit of color. And here's a clip of uh, some spoonbills landing, joining their friends. Now, this one particular one landed, and so I started to pan over to the right, as you'll see in a second, thinking, oh, I'll pick up on the other ones as they fly in, because when one comes in, there's usually more to follow. So eventually, I start panning to the right, and I don't see anything. I'm like, okay, I would have thought they, they came in from that direction. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I don't see anything. So eventually I go back and uh, okay, here's, there's, a, there's another uh, spoonbill. So it snuck in from somewhere else and now some more come in. So um, eventually they show up. Lots of times they're just hiding in the tall grasses on the marsh side. You can't even see them. They're tucked in there. Other times you'll, you'll see like a, a little armada of them flying in. Uh, you know, half a dozen or so at a time and, and then landing. But uh, sometimes they just they just all of a sudden just show up uh, out of nowhere and, and you know they were just hiding in the, in the grasses. You can see some shorebirds in the background. Here's a wood stork, lower level shot. And here's a video clip of a gator eating a blue crab. This crab, you know, moderate size, but as you can see, it's not going to take long for it to swallow it. And here it goes. Now watch, watch the blowing of the bubbles um, from the alligator. 
Now I looked that up because I've seen that a few times where after they've eaten something, uh, they start blowing bubbles. And I says, is that some kind of you know special behavior pattern or what have you? So I just put the question in to the internet and uh, here's what I got. It just says alligators have evolved over time to be able to breathe through their skin by having specialized cells. These enable the alligator's body to absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide while on land as well as underwater. This is why they will often blow bubbles from their mouths when in the water. It helps them extract more oxygen from the atmosphere than if they were just to hold their breath. So, okay, there's the official explanation for the blowing bubble alligators. And I'm sure he swallowed that, that crab hole, so I, you know, I couldn't really figure out why he's just kind of moving his head back and forth and going under the water, popping up, blowing bubbles. Well, we now know why he was blowing bubbles, but... When you watch any species, that, you know, whether it be a particular bird or a reptile or whatever, I mean, you're always learning something new all the time. You see something that you didn't pick up on before or didn't think anything of it. And then when you start seeing it more often, you say, oh, I got to figure out what's going on. Now, here's a couple stills. Two female anhingas, the one on the left was, was, was hurt. The one on the right literally landed on top of this this one female and you can see the female's head behind it and tried to drown it and here's a quick video clip and it was pretty nasty I mean I don't know what's going on you got the the one just out of view on the left that you'll see in a second and it's having a hard time it can't swim it can't fly out of the water so it's hurt it's just lunging forward and the other one says, I'm going to finish you off. So I don't know what happened, but it got nasty and it landed on top of it again. Like it's trying to drown it. And uh, eventually, you know, it swims off like, okay, you know, hope you learned your lesson. And, you know, I just saw the feathers, you know, barely on, floating on the top of the water and followed this one for a little bit. And then I panned back the other way to see if I could find it. And it was poking its head out, but it was wounded. It was hurt. And unfortunately, it's going to end up being dinner for a gator later on because it won't survive if it can't fly. And here's one that's hanging around at Gator Island. You can see how high the, the grasses are. And this is a little blue heron. It's just kind of aggravating a heron for whatever reason, just playing around, I guess. I love it when they're changing their, their feather colors are changing. Now this is a, a video clip of spoonbills and uh, great egrets that are on an island that's you know on the pond side you know somewhat in the middle of the pond and they hang out here all the time. So this is one one section where you know they're <coughs> excuse me they're pretty far out if I didn't have the 800, I wouldn't even be filming this, uh, be able to film this. They're pretty far out, and uh, and they hang here, and they can sit out there for hours and hours and hours. And uh, like I said, for most folks, they don't have the, the, the glass to be able to, to, to reach them. And, um, you know, you're waiting for them to fly closer and land in a, in a different corner of the pond where you can get some images of them. But that can take hours. They could stay out here, you know, three, four hours before they decide to move. You just never know when they're gonna do it. And this is just a, a picture of what's to come. This is the ruins of the walkway out from the nature center that's in the middle of the marsh. And I'm gonna use some of those stills as like fill-in or separator, uh, separators between these video clips. And, uh, here we are back at the island again. You can see in the background, you can see a gator, I'm going to call it swimming on the left-hand side. 
more like crawling and a few uh, other shorebirds in the background. Yeah, the gators aren't even like laying on this island. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I've had pictures uh, from last year where you'd have a half a dozen gators laying on, on this strip of, uh, of grass and uh, stone and shells. Uh, you wouldn't have birds there at all. You would just have the gators. But at this point in time this year, it seems like it's, it's populated by the birds and the gators have pretty much stayed away. And here's another clip, and you can see uh, these two are kind of like playing around with either a stick or, or pieces of cord grass. And here's a video clip. Um, that was an overlook area. You can see all the damage uh, from a hurricane. Can't remember what it was, I mean, it was last year, but uh, th there have been no um, efforts to date to remove any of this damaged area and start rebuilding it. You're going to see some people in the picture. You're going to see Bob from Barbar Photos there uh, with the camera camera around his neck. And uh, he's as far out as you can go on that walkway. I mean, they did add some boards on the bottom and extend it out a little bit, but uh, you can't walk out anywhere near as far as you used to. And there'll be a subsequent video where you'll see you know really how far out you used to be able to go in the meantime you're going to just see some clips of the spoonbills having fun um, hanging out and okay there you go there's the damaged area that dark line you see is where the uh, walkway continued and here they are. They just love playing with with the cord grass and the sticks and you know, of course these guys all flew over from the they were on the pond side and eventually they all took off and we wondered where they went. So we went out to the nature center and decided just to, you know, take a peek at what's left of the walkway. And to our surprise Spoonbills were all hanging out here. But it made for some, a few interesting photos and some interesting video, I think. You just have a fascination for, for putting uh, sticks in their mouth. Another, uh, another video clip. Definitely having a great time. They like hanging out with each other. Now they're busy playing with the cord grass and sticks and stuff, but I would think that there's a lot of uh, fiddler crabs um, that would be crawling around the cord grass uh, that they'd be able to get for food. But I didn't really catch any of them uh, eating food items. They were just too busy playing. You got a still image coming up that I like because it's almost like somebody's trying to make these guys uh, walk the plank. You know, okay guys, you're, you're out of here, walk the plank. We have another video coming up. This will be the last video clip. Uh, this will be like the end of the, the end of the road here. Uh, you're gonna get to see 
you know where where this walkway extended to okay that's where it's broken that dark line is the path or part of the path and then you eventually you connect it to a platform that was fairly large that we were able to get a lot of shots of uh, there were kingfishers that like to hang out there and unfortunately we don't have anywhere to get there and we have no idea when it's going to get repaired. But if we can get some images of the birds that like to hang out on the, uh, the debris field, it's better than nothing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As I say, enjoy life, capture some of it, get out there and get some great images. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment if you haven't subscribed I would appreciate it if you would and uh, for those of you that may not know I mean uh, our friend uh, Chuck from AP Studios had taken ill He's, he has not been able to do his live stream and uh, I did do a live stream on the 8th of July um, in uh, Chuck's time slot and I will temporarily uh, be doing some live streams. Um, he did uh, was watching on Saturday, and his wife came on, and his daughter came on, and everybody got to send their well wishes to Chuck and say hello. So I hope you join us again uh, this coming um, Saturday for my second live stream, and um, I hope uh, Chuck will be watching again because I think he enjoys hearing from everyone and seeing everybody in the chat and we're just trying to keep it going uh, I'm gonna try to keep it going on Saturdays until uh, Chuck recovers well enough to where he can get back in the saddle again on uh, AP Studios and turn everything back over to him because I'm certainly not Chuck's replacement by any means and uh, Chuck love you man Keep working to get better and uh, hope to see you soon. Take care, everybody. Get out there and shoot.